Okay, uh, hello everyone. So I'm Martin from Intus and uh, welcome to the webinar. Uh, so today I'm going to start with uh, uh, with a bit of presentation from our side, uh, what uh, uh, we are doing at Mintos and then uh, what we see the lending companies are doing. Uh, but to be honest, most of the time uh, I would like to spend answering your questions. And then for that, please uh, use the Slido link, uh, which is provided in YouTube uh, chat. And then uh, I'm going to follow by uh, popularity. So I'm going to cover step, uh, each question one by one. Not going to be any, uh, and all the popular questions can uh, get answered. So we, we initially put an uh, hour and a hour, actually, one hour, and then we uh, saw the number of questions and interest. So we put it an uh, hour and a half in total. If necessary, happy to spend more time and actually uh, uh, answer as many questions as possible. So uh, let's uh, kick it off and uh, uh, let's start with a short introduction and uh, uh, some presentation from my side. So no big news, uh, or well, all of us are, I guess, following the news. So uh, the, we live in very uncharted times. So this is uncharted territory. So nobody knows, uh, hasn't experienced it before really. And uh, what we see is obviously the the world is uh, closing down. The, the societies are undergoing a lot of restrictions and so forth. And uh, obviously, that has an effect on economy. So, a lot of governments have stepped in the last few weeks, or the last week has been very tough, especially when it comes to Europe. Let's see how it develops in the US and in the UK, uh, and also uh, when it gets to uh, Southeast Asia and also Africa. So, I guess there's going to be a lot of still ahead of us, and uh, let's see how it uh, goes. Uh, of course, economy is uh, uh, affected and if you look at the stock market then uh, actually this is something which nobody has seen before so the dow jones actually one of the indexes well if you look at the stock market in general so there's been a lot of uh, volatility and obviously drop in prices and uh, some people say this might be uh, one of the worst years in the last 30 years and definitely the the downturn is here so there's no no questions asked about so it's just a question how, how big it's going to be so uh it of course all this has uh, affected uh, also uh peer-to-peer -peer lending or investing in loans and uh, also that's what uh, also of course uh, we are not an exception uh, we see that the investors are uh investing less and uh, that's understandable. And uh, I'm going to now talk a bit more what measures we have taken as Mintos, and then also going to dig deeper in um, uh, in what loaners are doing. Well, and as most of the companies, so as you can see, as most of the companies, we are working from home. So uh, that's basically uh, perhaps pretty usual these and days. Anyway, so what we do at Mintos, so first is uh, we have to ensure the health of Mintos and uh, uh, make sure that we as a company can uh, continue operating in a, a stable manner. So what we first did and in the last two weeks have been, uh, and the last week specifically has been very uh, tough and long days, long nights. So what we did the first is actually we went through and questioned every assumption about our business starting from how much uh, cash flow we have what's our runway what's expected revenues what is uh, the cost base uh, what we can do with the headcount and so forth and so forth we basically went through all of it and questioned all the assumptions we have about the business i think what we did we really made fast and decisive adjustments to changing circumstances so we dramatically changed uh, our assumptions and uh, in, uh, and based on that we also changed and made adjustments to our business so uh what when we were starting the year and well in the uh, last few years to be honest so all the time we were looking okay this is the growth what we have and uh, we were building the cost base to support that growth 
and now when the when we see that the growth definitely not gonna uh, materialize so we are more in the mode of maintaining what we have already today instead of like uh, growing so we have to adjust our, our cost base so first and foremost what we did we uh, uh, made a very significant cost uh, cost cutting so we cost cut all the costs by approximately 40 percent and uh, in that way we uh, actually uh, significantly significantly improved our uh, monthly uh, expected monthly uh, cash burn. So, and then also what we introduced, we introduced zero based budgeting. So everything is basically at zero. And then uh, we start with the most essential costs, which are uh, obviously the paying for the servers, bank commissions, paying the salaries to the people, and then uh, also uh, marketing costs, some of them. But in general, what we have introduced is zero based. Uh, budgeting from to uh, uh from uh, actually this week already uh then with this all has translated to uh extending our runway so today we actually feel very comfortable for the next at least 15 18 months so we still have around 3.6 million euros in the bank account from the previous uh rounds when we raised uh, in total 5 million euros so we've been uh, more or less uh profitable since early 2017 and uh, now in uh, early 2020 we were uh, pushing uh, pedal to the metal a bit more and now we basically stopped that and uh, are extending the runway our uh, revenue is still uh, based on, on the March numbers and let's see how the uh, April numbers gonna come out so our uh, run rate of revenue should be close to 10 10 to 12 million euros but obviously there's a lot of uncertainty in out there so uh we have to take with a uh, <clears throat> with a cautious uh, optimism uh, how the revenue is gonna be developed so uh when when it comes to meters uh, we feel comfortable that we made fast uh, very uh, decisive and at the same time uh painful decisions so to adjust our uh, cost base uh, but that we are very confident put us in a good position to weather this storm and come out stronger out of it. So the key here was to act fast, and we didn't we didn't lose a day uh, since actually uh, already last week, last Monday, when we saw that the the world is changing, and then this week just accelerated that. So uh, we did our best, and today um, we feel rather comfortable about uh, meters going through given the circumstances we are at. Uh, then uh, what measures we have uh, made with respect to the, loan, uh, to the loan supply and the loan originators? So first and foremost, so we increased our uh, cadence of monitoring and communicating with, uh, with the loan originators. So today we do it uh, on a daily basis. Uh, especially with those uh, loan originators which are uh, short term, uh, which are originating short term loans, uh, and then uh, those which are uh, with the larger portfolios and so forth. So that's what we did, and we're going to continue. So it's basically, if previously, when the times were normal, then we were doing this monitoring and communication with loan originators on. Uh, with some even quarterly basis when we didn't see any problems. So it's always been risk-based approach. With some we did on on monthly basis. With some where we saw that there's a need, we did on weekly basis. And today we do it uh, all on daily uh, basis and we monitor the performance and everything what is happening on daily basis. Next, what we did is, uh, and this is uh, obviously we see a lot of uh, topics and I'm going to cover that more about the pending payments. Uh, so the pending payments we are improving improving as well uh, here uh, before jumping too much in detail basically the pending payments is obviously they uh, are more uh, uh, people see more of the pending payments when the bar of repayments are larger than investments in loans so that means the lending companies loan originators have to pass those payments they have collected to us and that's uh, where the pending payments come into play. So we are working on that, improving that, uh, following that they are settled in timely timely manner. So very quickly we introduced uh, 
uh, interest on the pay pending payment penalty fees on the uh, late pending payments and we're going to continue working on the pending payments now that they are uh, more uh, important than they used to be in the regular circumstances by the way i do see a lot of questions as well uh asked in the chat so uh please do use the slido link to post your questions and upload the questions you would want to answer to because obviously in the chat there's a lot of questions and we're not going to go be able to go through all of them in a structured way so i'm going to follow all the i'm going to try to answer all the questions based on popularity starting with the most popular and then uh, going one, one one by one next what we're doing we are working on uh, on uh, on extension so we see that the uh loan originators uh uh, for some, uh, there's definitely going to be more extensions, so people going to come and ask uh, if they can extend the loans. And then uh, this uh, situation has also shown that some of the loan originators have actually, uh, they, they, in the technical uh, solutions, they have not implemented the extensions, which is actually uh, rather uh, uh, important. Uh, uh, for them especially when there's actually comes a borrower who wants to extend and if there's no extension on the mintos marketplace then they would uh, have to buy back the loan and place it uh, a new loan and the extended loan on the mintos which worked when there was uh, normal circumstances um, but today when the investments are lower than they used to be that can create a lot of liquidity problems for the lending company so we have to work on those extensions and and get this uh, technical solution for all the loan originators in place. So that's what we are also doing. Uh, for the next, we actually already finished all the uh, Mintos uh, rating updates. So we had them uh, ready to be published, but then now we are with uh, new information and uh, new world we live in. So we are uh, reviewing those uh, rating updates and we're gonna publish them. Uh, hopefully uh, sooner than, than later so but obviously there's a lot of work which goes into those uh, updates and uh, what we realize is that uh, what holds true even two weeks ago is not anymore true today so we definitely gonna update those and then finally so we are preparing for a disruption in borrower repayments especially for the in the countries uh, where there's a uh, very starch lockdowns and uh, where there's for instance some uh loan originators uh, have branches and those branches have to be closed so there's going to be disruption in borrowers making a repayment and of course we also are preparing for increase in uh, in non-performing loans so that's going to be uh we are not disillusional about that so there's definitely going to be increase in non-performing loans but uh, we feel that uh, Loan originators are uh, well prepared for that, and we take already uh, preemptive measures. So, for instance, we look at the uh, list of the countries who are introducing lockdowns and how that affects the loan loan originators. We look at the performance of the loan of the loan supplies uh, of specific loan originators. So, there goes a lot of uh, work there. So, basically, all our risk team is now working day in day out, and that's uh, all the measures what we take. Uh, with respect to the loan supply and uh, uh, to ensure that uh, there's as little disruption as possible next i wanted to talk a bit more about what measures are uh, loan originators taking so so basically uh, we uh, we already uh, published some of it but i would want to go through that as well uh, many of them actually, the first thing what they do is uh, ensure safety of their employees, similar to any company today, including us. So all the people for, for Mintos are working from home, uh, most of them. And uh, and uh, that's uh, actually for, as a Mintos, it's, uh, uh, the remote work has been part of our culture since, since day one, so there's no disruption to our service whatsoever. And uh, the same is uh, also for most of the loan originators. But uh, for the loan originators, many of them have a lot of people, so they have to make sure that the people are safe. Uh, a lot of employees, so some of them have employees, uh, like in thousands of employees, so they, they are huge companies, and they have to make sure that they are safe, especially when it comes to having those loan originators which have branches, and there's like daily contact with the customers. So a lot of loan originators are, first and foremost, actually ensuring the safety of their employees. So 
for instance, the same Aku Laku uh, were the, the, in Indonesia. So for them, it's actually the uh, e even more so. It, it's important, but it's actually for all the, the loan generators. It's, uh, it's very important. Uh, we see that loan generators, the measures what they are taking is uh, they are uh, cutting costs, uh, and reviewing the cost, and doing drastically. Uh, of course, they realize that. Uh, with the current cost base and uh, with a decreased uh, liquidity, they uh, will be a limit to how much they can originate the loans. And in general, actually, loan originators are in a very peculiar situation uh, because, on one hand, they have much more uh, invest, uh, much more uh, demand for loans. So borrowers are uh, coming in and they want to uh, borrow. And what's also happening is uh, much more, uh, much higher quality borrowers are uh, coming to them. Uh, but on the other hand, they have uh, less liquidity available, so they don't uh, have uh, the same. If you look at the investments on Mintos, so they don't have uh, obviously investments are lower, so they have to be very cautious how they build their cost structure. And then uh, uh, only those who are actually going to cut costs uh, significantly and who also will be prudent and will not be uh, uh, origin not originate. Uh, 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 basically, we'll cut the originations, and those uh, will come out stronger out of this. And uh, many of them we see actually are very well positioned. They have a good uh, diversified funding sources, and they have to be pragmatic and uh, and then cut their originations because as a loan originator, so there's a competition. They see that uh, uh, some competitors are cutting down the origination, so there is, of course, inclination to go out and uh, uh, and issue loans to the uh, borrowers. These days, issuing a loan is not really a problem, and also even issuing a loan with a, a good performance and good quality loan, the problem is the liquidity. So they have to manage that. There's going to be lower liquidity, so they have to cut down the originations, and that means also cutting down the costs for the loan originators. What else we see? Uh, the, for sure, tightening the credit and risk policies. I think all of them, and that's uh, just um, uh, also a reasonable thing to do for for the loan originators. So they have to really uh, cut down on 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 the cutoffs. Basically, the cutoffs is uh, which, which type of loan originators, uh, which type of the borrowers uh, they are accepting, and that's what uh, loan originators are doing. Uh, this is uh, goes the same. Uh, they keep uh, high standards in collection as they used to have, and they are uh, they're necessary reviewing those collection procedures and uh, making sure that the collections are working uh, in line uh, as they used to be and uh, keep the same high standard. So that's what loan originators are also doing. What we see. And finally, so I think the, uh, what we see as well is, uh, especially many of loan originators uh, have been through the downturns already, and uh, many of them have people who have worked in finance before, uh, who know what it means uh, that the borrowers have the uh, uh, short-term problems with repaying loans. So many of the loan originators are preparing for proactive work with those borrowers, which are experiencing difficulties. So that would mean, for instance, uh, giving extension or reasonable extension where it's due, uh, restructuring the loan, and in general, working with the client to make sure that those problems which they, and difficulties they have today, uh, they can actually solve and they, they can repay the loan. So uh, many loan originators, if not all of them, are preparing for this proactive work and already now looking what exactly they can do and how they can adjust to the new situation, which uh, will come. So there's no questions asked about that. So the borrowers will have uh, problems and delays in, in servicing their loans, and uh, also that the the, uh, uh, the, the loan are, uh, are ready to work uh, work with them. So that's it. What loan originators are doing? Uh, what measures they are taking? Uh, to leave on the final note. So from my side, when presentation mode, uh, from the presentation. So uh, I think it's important to stress that uh, while this uh, downturn might be the first downturn where uh, individual investors are participating in alternative lending, 
this is for sure not the first downturn for lending in general or for alternative lending. So many of the companies have been through that. They have experience in that. Of course, we are also not disillusional that some of the borrowers are going to have problems and the, there's going to be increase in non-performing loans, which then uh, will affect some loan originators. And uh, we are not questioning that some of the loan originators will go out of business. So that's uh, that uh, totally can happen. But uh, on overall, we believe that uh, they are well positioned. And also what we saw in, in 2008 and nine. Uh, some of the loan originators uh, are saying that those were the best uh, years for them. And this is a function of many things, but uh, mainly it's because uh, they can tar service uh, uh, higher quality uh, borrowers, and then the cost base for them is also lower and, and they can manage those. Uh, the, the thing is that for a lot of the amount which they're lending is rather small, so it's not your mortgage of like hundreds of thousands of few hundreds of thousands of euros it, it's a uh, few thousands of euros or hundreds of euros and those those loans uh, the borrowers actually can uh, can service uh, so uh, we see that, that there's a uh, increased activity in secondary markets so where some people see that uh, this is the right time to, to get out uh, a lot of people see that this is the right opportunity to uh, build a good portfolio uh, with a very well priced asset uh, which is perhaps not correlating with other asset classes. And there are obviously like different views on that. So that's it going to be from my side. So uh, now I'm going to switch to uh, to the questions. So uh, we do use Slido. So on Slido, uh, we're going to go uh, question by question. And then um, let's see how, how it goes. So uh, I'm going to now switch uh, Slido. So bear with me for a second. All right, so we should uh, see the Slido. Uh, so the first question is how much runway we have uh, as a mentor. So uh, we, we have about uh, 3.6 million euros in the bank account, and that's uh, with our current cost base and our current or other pessimistic revenue uh, projections should give us about like 15, 18 months of, uh, of a runway. So overall, we feel comfortable uh, about Minters, but obviously there's a lot of uncertainty out there. So we are uh, ready to, to adjust uh, as we see necessary when, when the time comes. But for the, uh, for the near future, we feel uh, rather comfortable on this one. Then the next question is about the financial situation uh, with Finco. Uh, so the Finco just released, uh, I think they released the financial report today or maybe yesterday. Uh, they are, uh, uh, they had a rather strong 2019 and in general they are uh, now the largest, uh, they have the largest loan book uh, funded on Mintos and uh, I would, uh, for details, I would uh, suggest to go and check their uh, uh, release uh, on, on the blog post. Uh, so they, in total, if we talk about the numbers, I think they finished last year with around 130 million revenue uh, and about net profit, I think was about 17, 17 million euros. And uh, very strong players, so they have uh, more than 1,200 people, if I'm not mistaken. and. Uh, uh, they are one of the largest uh, lending companies on, on Mintos. So about the pending payments, so why are the pending payments accumulating and when uh, how that works? So pending payments, how, how does it work is basically uh, uh, there are two streams of uh, of uh, cash flows, basically flows of money. So there's investments in loans. So investors are investing in loans and then there are borrowers making the repayments. So up to the a few weeks ago, it usually was the case that there are more investments in loans than the repayments of the borrowers. So investors never saw the pending payments because we are netting those two streams. It doesn't make sense to do uh, two transfers of money that uh, we send the uh, investor investments uh, or the money which investors have invested to loan originator and then loan originators is uh, 
are uh, in the meantime transferring money of the borrower repayments. So we are netting those, and when the uh, investments are higher than borrower repayments, then obviously there are no pending payments for investors. There is a uh, pending payments for loan originators because we do the net settlements on a weekly basis. So the if we settled, uh, basically net have been netted. But if there are more uh, investments than borrower pay repayments, then this is accumulating until our settlement date. Settlement usually takes uh, on a weekly basis, and then we send that money to the loan originator. So when there were more investments than uh, uh, borrower repayments, so the uh, and the money flow was from investors or from interest to the loan originators. Now, when the investments are uh, less than the borrower repayments, now the investors see the pending payments. So what is happening is basically every day we see there are uh, investments in loans, but the borrower repayments are uh, higher. So that means that there's uh, uh, this what can be netted between investments and borrower repayments we do net, but then uh, the part which is higher, it's accumulating. It's accumulating until the settlement date. When we make a settlement, then the uh, loan originators transfer that money to us. A lot of people ask why we cannot do it on a real-time basis or on daily basis. And there are a lot of things uh, we have to take into account. So first of all, we have, uh, it's, it's worth to mention that today we have about 3.3 uh, uh, million borrowers uh, or outstanding loans. So that means active uh, loans. We have around 180 lending uh, or uh, legal entities. Uh, so every lending company also have, can have different lend, uh, lead, uh, legal entities. So each, each, with each of those, we have to make the settlement. They have to make the transfer. Also, for many of the loan originators, they are in the countries where it's not that easy to transfer the money. So it takes time. And it would not be feasible to actually do it on, on, a, on a daily basis. Uh, what we are now looking into is uh, to try to settle faster so we think that today actually settlement or the pending payments on average is around six days uh, which is it's fine but it could be of course uh, uh, shorter so we think that we can get it to like three four days but there's always going to be pending payments because it's not possible that there's uh, borrowers when the moment they repay then straight away that money appears on the investor account we still have to get that money from the uh, loan originators and may, some of them for instance do have uh, cash-based collection. So that means that somebody goes into the branch, they pay down the loan. That is, of course, inputted in the system. We get the uh, the API request. We show it on Mintos, uh, on investor account as a pending payment. But for the loan originator to collect this cash from all the branches, that's a job. Once they have collected, they have to go to the bank and then actually send that money to us. And it's a uh, uh, might sound very uh, straightforward, but there's a lot of things which are behind the scenes. And uh, and uh, while we see how we can improve it further, especially now when there's more pending payments than there used to be, uh, what we have to realize is that there's always going to be pending payments. And uh, the pending payments is a, uh, a simple concept is basically that when we, when we make a settlement, uh, then the loan originators have to uh, transfer it to us. And until we have receive the money on our account. This is money in transit from the loan originator to us. Uh, that's going to be treated as a pending payment. So there's no really way how you can uh, uh, do it uh, in a in much uh, different way. So for the pending payments, uh, I think today it's uh, on average, uh, I checked it's around like six days on average. Uh, uh, and for most of them, it's e even less. Uh, we see it's, it's going to, uh, we will be able to decrease it uh, slightly. And then also we are uh, working on improving the same interest on pending payments and so forth. While sure, the money in transit is uh, detrimental to the uh, return uh, or the return what investors get, uh, if we could calculate the effect on the return, it's super, super small. So all the pending payments as just a tiny fraction of the total portfolio which, which is out there and the pending payments are just for a few days so the total effect on the return while it might sound that it's a large uh, in actual numbers uh, the pending payments obviously when you see that there, you have money pending you think that it is not invested as an investor um, but actually the effect on the uh, uh, return is uh, is very very small 
Nevertheless, we obviously see the uh, feedback. We uh, the moment when we saw the depending payments for investors become more important. So uh, we we did our best to improve that, and we'll continue working on on improving that. But uh, it's thirty three different countries. Some of them are uh, very far. There's a, a lot of different banking systems. Uh, they have to exchange the currencies and so forth. And there's always going to be some pending payments. Then the borrower payment repayments are higher the investments in loans. When it was a few weeks ago, when the investments were usually higher than the borrower repayments, then we didn't have a pending payments because all the money was actually pending from us to the loan originators. Now it's the other way around. So that's how the pending payments uh, work. Uh, pending payments is not, uh, uh, there's no correlation with uh, how much money we have in the bank account because pending payments is money in transit. So the loan originator, when we come to settlement, uh, they have, for instance, they have to send for instance, a million euros to us. So we don't put that money on. Uh, there's no uh, correlation with, with how much money we have on the bank account. So this uh, one million is in transit. When we receive this one million, then we uh, release that money for investors. And then that's available for investors on the investor account for reinvestment, for withdrawal, or just keeping on the account. So there's no correlation uh, on the uh, how much money we have in the bank account. If you have, uh, with one eye, I'm also looking at the YouTube uh, chat. So if you have any further questions about pending payment, happy to, to explain uh, that. Uh, moving forward, so about the Finco and the loans in current uh, and increasing pending payments. Uh, in general, actually, the for Finco, what we see uh, the loans in uh, who, which are current, uh, they are in line with uh, with the industry. Uh, or with kind of other uh, loan originators, uh, while 54 or uh, we have to take into account also those pending, uh, not pending, but the extended loans as well. So they have around 64%, which would be considered current. Uh, the thing is that uh, obviously a lot of those loans are, are going into the delays and then they are extended. So that's part of, of the product. So we, that is in line. So that's nothing. Uh, not, not, nothing extraordinary. When it comes to pending payments, yes, so there were higher than usual pending payments, and that was caused uh, basically Finco, uh, they had a uh, problem on their side, technical side, that when they were sending API requests that, uh, hey, this loan is extended, then actually what we received was that, uh, hey, this uh, is a rebuy because it is extension. So it, the loans were not extended and that's why the pending payments were increasing. So we solved that and uh, and we communicated with investors and now those pending payments uh, have been properly allocated to the extensions which uh, had to be. Um, okay, so the next question. Uh, so how we go about the uh, about the loan originator? So uh, what we do, we uh, do much uh, much more daily monitoring of the of the loan originators. We do the uh, communication with them. So and are uh, reviewing uh, how they see uh, the cost cuttings and the originations and so forth. Um, it's hard to say like exactly which uh, which is going to be affected and to what, what extent. So for sure, most of the loan initiatives will be affected. Uh, most, if not, well, so, some are going to not uh, survive. So the, the the crisis and that's part of uh, part of uh, life. But uh, in general, we feel that most of them are very well positioned and. Uh, uh, they can capitalize on this uh, and similar to 2008, 2000, 2008, 2009 actually goes through that uh, crisis. So uh, this is uh, uh, about secondary market. Uh, we see obviously there is increase in, uh, in investors trying to uh, liquidate their positions, uh, which is understandable. So uh, when the uh, uncertainty arises, so a lot of investors are basically trying to get cash home or they see opportunities in other asset classes. 
and then obviously they are looking where they can actually uh, liquidate the position so that is increase in secondary market uh, there's also a very decent uh, demand in secondary market especially at, at a good uh, uh, discount so there are two views so some people are uh, see this as an opportunity. So they see that this is a good way to get in. The interest rates in, as well, we see they are increasing, which means in depth-based instruments, it means that they are actually, the price of the asset is decreasing. So it's a good uh, time in, uh, to, to come in and buy assets which are at a lower price than in regular circumstances. Some investors believe that this is the right time to get, get out of. So uh, there are, uh, and that's why we have secondary market and that's why we also see uh, a lot of new investors still joining every, every day and investing in also the primary market so there's always going to be similar to stock exchange so when you see that the the stocks are uh, decreasing in value so there are some which believe that uh, i have to get out and there are some which say that at this price actually it is very good investment and the same we see that is happening with investments in loans so the loans at the uh, specific price are actually very good investment and then what we see on the secondary and primary market that the price are decreasing or interest rates are increasing and the people are taking the opportunity to invest uh, low and uh, actually come out of the uh, of the downturn with a with a nice profit so and we see that the, the different uh, views of uh, of investors so the next question is an update about the monego so uh, monego is uh, uh, we are uh, in contact with the uh, liquidator, so uh, they have collected the first, uh, not the first, but they are collecting the repayment borrowers, and we expect that the, they will uh, transfer the money, uh, the first uh, part of the money to us in uh, in April. All the COVID situation makes it a tiny bit more difficult, um, but in general, uh, we have, because first of all, we cannot go to Kosovo so, uh, as a team, but we have a local uh, lawyers there who are working on behalf of us, and we we see that uh, we would we should get the first uh, uh, tranche from the liquidator already in April. So revision of ratings. Uh, yes, we are reviewing uh, ratings. So uh, some of them. Well, that's of course the economic output has changed so that will have an effect of ratings and uh, all most of them if not all will have a downward pressure on the ratings and we will review so and we are not reviewing how we go about the ratings so uh, we are looking how we can further improve them and that's what we're going to continue continue doing and uh, thanks for your feedback thanks for uh uh for for uh, for for the recommendations and also the the risk team is uh, uh, taking their proactive approach as well and looking how to improve the ratings. So what we see the ratings uh, now it's uh, kind of everything is, is in one bucket, um, but the ratings how we see them developing is actually that the ratings should be uh, one is about the rating is about the the loan originator itself how how good they are in underwriting credit scoring what are the debt collection procedures and so forth so basically the uh, rating of the loan originator itself then a separate one is uh, which is very financial uh financially uh, uh financial kind of uh, uh basically instrument which is a buyback guarantee uh, which at the end of the day if you look from pure kind of uh, financial perspective it's uh credit default swap so you can actually put a rating on uh, your buyback guarantee and the healthiness of this buyback guarantee and the third one and which is uh, in most of the uh, uh in most of the cases the most important is uh, the quality of the loan supply because at the end of the day if the loan supply is great if it's a high quality loan supply that is uh default in line with uh, expectations and there's a right pricing of those loans then the rest is actually less important apart from collections and somebody has to be collecting so we are working on uh improving that and because of course we have a lot of different loan originators so uh, it's not going to be uh, like next week that we up, uh, introduce uh, new ratings but we're definitely going to push uh, the update on the current rating system but we are also working on uh, on improving the rating system mm. 
Yeah, so the next one we answered about the COVID. Uh, what is our strategy to block uh, run on the bank? So actually for us, it's uh, it's like in a typical, uh, uh, and this, well, as a kind of standard scenario, it's like a bank, a run, a run on the bank is not really possible because all the money which is uh, on um, for investors on the Mintos account and invested, so we have the same all money in the bank account. So whenever they want to withdraw, they can always withdraw the money to their account. So what we can see, uh, what we can see, of course, that the investors might decide to invest less than they used to. Uh, but then uh, this is uh, then the function of how the loan originators can adjust their or origination business, what other funding sources they, they have. So the loan originators might need to readjust their funding sources, uh, but uh, there cannot be really uh, run on the banks in the kind of typical uh, definition of that. So that's uh, really not possible. So what is possible? Yes, that, that most of the investors are all... all because for each asset, there's a price, and at, the, at these rates and uh, these prices, we believe that the uh, loans are a uh, very good investment. And, uh, and we see other investors, we see investors uh, who, who, who believe that. Of course, we see many who, who are uncertain about the future, and we understand that. But uh, we see that uh, there are always going to be investors who will want to fund the, fund the loans. It just depends on how much of those and what quality of loans as well. So the next one is again about the pending payments, I guess, and about the short-term loans. So it's a very extreme case. So obviously there are, I guess there's no one-day loans, uh, but in general, yes, for short-term loans, of course, all the uh, technical uh, delays in getting the money affects the return because it is not invested. There are two things, though. I think what we hear and see uh, investors uh, mixing up. One is a grace period. So gra grace period uh, is nothing to do with spending payments. So grace period is a, a period of days which a loan originator allows to the borrower uh, to repay the loan without any penalties. So, for instance, if the borrower has a due date on, say, uh, Friday, they, uh, the borrower goes into the bank, bank, they send the money, but the loan originator receives the money only on, say, Monday or Tuesday. And if they have a pending uh, grace period of five days, then the borrowers are, uh, are not charged any late fees. If the borrowers are late more than the grace period, then they are charged for all, all the days they've been late. So that's basically grace period is something that loan originators have in place uh, as a technical delay. Uh, for the borrowers to, to settle their uh, due payments, uh, 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 which come due. And then the pending payments are which we allow loan originators to actually send the money to us. Uh, it's uh, because also when the loan originators receive, so they receive uh, pay, uh, repayments with the borrowers every day, every hour, so a lot of them. And then uh, obviously they cannot transfer each and every 10 euros to us, so they uh, are transferring in batches. So we allow for each uh, uh, up to seven days for them to transfer the money, which uh, which is due to us. And then uh, and that's uh, uh, basically means that the investors see the pending payments. It is up to seven days. On average, it's actually much less. So we see that uh, also the pending payments are accumulating day, day by day. So it's not that all of them are seven days and only the money the investor is going to receive after seven days. So actually, if, if we have settlement date on, say, Wednesday, then yes, if, uh, if it's a previous Thursday, then it's going to take six days to get the pending payment. But if the... Uh, and this pending payment is a, a Tuesday, then actually the settlement is done on Wednesday and the investors receive money on the, their account also already, uh, also one, already after one day. Uh, but for the, yeah, yeah, so that's what I see also in the chat. So yes, sure, all those are, are similar. So grace period and pending payments, yes, uh, uh, up to the certain number of days, so there's no interest on them. And then uh, that's, that's part of, um, part of investing in loans. So it can be short and tiny bit, but both for the uh, borrowers and the loan originators as well. So we can shorten it a little bit, but it's not possible to have it uh, really real time. Okay, so the next question.
Uh, I, I would definitely not say that the mythos is collapsing. So what we see is that, uh, yes, there is a lot, uh, much, uh, much less uh, investments happening on the primary market. And that means that uh, as for any other asset classes, they are competing for the liquidity. So that means the interest rates are increasing and uh, uh, loan originators are basically putting a loan, which we see already uh, with a higher interest rates. And uh, why they can do that is because they can actually cut, on, cut down on other costs. So today, uh, if one of the industries which has affected the most is marketing uh, a lot, so a lot of uh, advertising agencies and all advertising is basically plunged to zero. So that means that for longer that marketing cost is now very, uh, very efficient. So they can save on that. Uh, they see that they can issue a good quality loan so they can uh, they can uh, decrease their profit margins and readjust in general actually for the as a cost of uh, as a funding cost of the total cost base for the lending companies uh, depends on the of course the product and like many many different other aspects it's uh, one fifth of the total cost base is actually funding cost so it's uh, uh, many other costs which they can optimize and that's how they can actually increase the interest rates and comp for this liquidity and actually issue which they think is a uh, uh, issue loans to the uh, to the higher quality borrowers and increase uh, their uh, portfolio so those who are very well capitalized and who have access today to the uh, liquidity they for them these uh, downturns is usually the golden times because they can grab the market share to get the new customers is much cheaper and they uh, actually can uh, build the strong businesses and that's also why many of the uh, alternative lending companies were uh, born in 2008 or on the back of 2008 2009 because in those times they can actually build build up their uh, client base and uh, and issue uh, uh, loans at a reasonable cost uh, then the next one is about uh, Will risk teams increase control? Somehow? Yeah, so this is what we touched already a little bit. Uh, will risk teams increase control? So, yes, so we do now daily monitoring, daily communication. So, also as a team, we have uh, uh, we have sales team or basically account management team, which we call partnership team. So, all those guys are in contact with the, uh, with the counterparties of loan originators. Uh, and then it's also the risk team which is uh, uh, again uh, sizable team which is working with each and every loan originator and then uh, other teams involved like legal uh, so basically all the teams are now uh, uh, focusing if before a few weeks ago we were we were as well focusing on the uh, current loan originators but then with uh, the other half we're focusing on the new originators and connecting new ones then today we uh we basically slashed everything which is about the new loan originators so we don't expect to see any new loan originators uh for the next few months so we are focusing all our efforts on our current loan originators and uh, working with them and monitoring them more and having a close co uh close cooperation with uh, with all of them so that's our strategy now So the next question is, uh, what happens if loan originators go default? Uh, what type of investors service first? Is bondholders or mintus investors? Had there been any legal due diligence? So for all the countries, for all the loan originators, so we of course involve our own in-house legal team, uh, but we also do work with, in each and every country, we have a out, outside the legal team, and then uh, each loan originator as well for them, all the transactions which we make are huge uh, transactions so in millions and tens of millions of euros so they involve their in-house legal teams and their out uh, outsourced uh, lawyers so there goes a lot of uh, uh, work behind the scenes when it comes to legal setups and legal due diligence and so forth answering the question about uh, uh, about the uh, which are serviced first so that depends on the on the country on the law and on the agreement so there's as you might imagine a lot of different setups uh 
Uh, and that's also the, depends if the in the country we can have a direct structure where investors are actually are uh, effectively buying the underlying uh, loan and they have a claim against the borrower. And then actually what loan originators are doing, they are collecting the payments and passing those payments. Or in those countries where we cannot have those structures, we have indirect structure where the loans are pledged on behalf of uh, Mintos company, on behalf of investors. And then we, uh, investors are uh, buying a claim right against the loan originator. So there are uh, different structures, legal st structures in place. And it depends uh, on the on the legal structure. So in some it's... Uh, uh it's really basically the short answer as uh, as much as i don't like the the answer is it depends so it really depends on on uh, each and every structure if you have a place so how many loan originators will we expect to go uh out to i guess like uh out of business during the uh, pandemic uh it, it's very hard to say so obviously there's a lot of uncertainty we know for sure that there's going to be disruption in borrowers making the repayment. So first and foremost is actually uh, what we see that uh, on the borrower side, at least today, there's no really change in, in their their performance. So what the loan originators have to manage is their uh, liquidity because uh, they were used to that uh, they can build a portfolio, they can uh, fund the loans at Mintos, and now they can fund less. So they have to readjust their, uh, their originations, and we are very... We're very in a very close cooperation with them and explaining what's happening so that they don't continue originating the loans which they cannot fund then afterwards and that leads them to uh, liquidity crisis. Uh, but uh, how many of them would go out of business? It's, it's a very tough question to answer. So we, we are uh, we today we have sixty four different lending companies. Uh, it would be. Uh, 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 disillusional to things that none of them going to have problems. So some of them will have, and some of them uh, might, and most likely will go out of business. How many of them? Well, let's see. But uh, also, when the uh, loan agents uh, go out of business, so what we uh, are explaining it to investors is that uh, uh, investors still have the claim towards the uh, final borrower. So even though, yes, in those cases which have been. Uh, now the same Eurocent case or a 40 case, which are prolonged uh, cases. So it's still the investors have a claim towards the uh, final borrower. So loaners that are going out of business doesn't mean that loaners that are uh, that investors are losing the money. So the question then comes: uh, how you collect the payments from the borrowers and uh, how you uh, transfer that money to investors. All right, so. The next question uh, is about uh, Finco loans that were expiring but extended to borrowers. Uh, could it be that Finco has liquidity? So Finco doesn't have any liquidity problems. So basically what was happening was that uh, Finco, uh, and that was shared in uh, in email with all the affected investors. So what was happening that Finco, through API requests, they were sending a request to, to our systems that, hey, this loan uh, has been, uh, please rebuy this loan because it has been extended. So that meant that uh, the loan was rebought and that uh, uh, fell into the pending payment. So we have to collect the money from the uh, Finco, receive money, and then we release it to investors. Uh, then in reality, uh, the loan was, uh, the, the, AP, the correct API request would have been that they say the loan has been extended and then it's extended and the loan remains with the investors. So basically, these technical issues, uh, what's uh, uh, what happened in that case, and this is uh, uh, why investors saw that some of those which were impending uh, payments got uh, allocated to the uh, uh, to investments in, in loans. In, in total, I think it was a few million euros, or three or four million euros, if I'm not mistaken. So what was, what was uh, caused by that technical issue, and then the pending payments, obviously, for the larger loan originator, which have a uh, bigger loan book, uh, there are going to be in absolute terms more uh, pending payments, uh, especially if it's a short term loans. So, but if you look uh, as a percentage of the loan book, then it's in line with other loan originators. So, there's no, no uh, we don't see any issues uh, there. Do we report the uh, interest income to Latin uh, tax authorities? Uh, uh, no. So all uh, 
interesting um, is gross. So uh, we leave tax uh, considerations to each and every investor. And also the uh, the tax treatments are so different. And uh, uh, also not in all cases, we could assume that the taxes, uh, that the income is actually uh, uh, generated on the territory of Latvia. So, and this is, I think, in general, a, a misconception which we have to clear is that, yes, most of the team for us sits here in Riga, in Latvia, but uh, uh, most of the business is outside of Latvia. So, uh, from, from Latvia, we do have, when it comes to loan supply, I guess it's around only like 5% or so is loan supply in Latvia. And the same is about investors. Uh, for investor numbers, it's even lower. So most of the business is outside of Latvia, and there's the, in general actually rather little uh, relation with uh, what happening in Latvia. Uh, so the next question is, how much people do you plan to to, to find? So uh, uh, well, unfortunately, today was a very very tough uh, day. So uh, we we had to lay off people also to cut our cost base. So. Uh, we in the last uh, year we we hired in total 140 people, and that brought our, our total of people. And unfortunately, today to to cut the cost base and to uh, to, to uh, continue in a in a good shape, so we had to lay off uh, about uh, 45 people, which most of them joined in the last few months or so, and most of them were with a. Uh, with our best intentions so that we're going to grow, but uh, definitely today was a rather tough and uh, emotional day uh, in, in the morning. But well, these are the kind of fast and decisive and well painful decisions which we believe we have to make and we uh, we made and we, we, I believe, set us for a good, um, a good uh, pass forward. Mm. So the uh, Latvian Tax Authority. So the both loan letters we did. Uh, so we are still, yes, uh, are we still planning to get the, uh, it's not banking license, it is electronic money institution license. So there's a uh, rather big difference between be, between those. With the main difference is actually this banking license. So you can do a lot of different services, including uh, take deposits. So electronic money institution license allows us to, to actually hold electronic money and uh, provide payments uh, services to the Investors, we are uh, applying for that. Uh, we are in the, in the process, and actually, we should uh, 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 obviously the the current uh, focus uh, have been on the uh, uh, on on the on kind of uh, uh, adapting to the current circumstances. But uh, we continue, and uh, uh, we believe it should be uh, this. Well, hopefully sooner than later. Well, we had plans already uh, earlier this year, but uh, most likely it's going to take additional like three, four months. Let's see how it goes. Uh, and then, yeah, on top of that, so what we're going to do, we're going to provide IBAN account numbers to all the investors. And then that will be your, uh, as regular IBAN account, regular bank account. And uh, we will put on top of it uh, a Mintos card, uh, so that investors have even easier access to their money on, on uh, Mintos account. Um, so what is next? Uh, yes. So that's a good question. Uh, so, da -da -da. Okay. okay, so the next question is about the seven days. Uh, no interest. I'm not sure if I get the question exactly right. So pending bench royalty means a lot of principal blocked up early bus. Uh, I'm not sure I'll get the question exactly, but basically what, what I read is that uh, uh, on air, okay, on early rebuys. Yeah, well, of course, that uh, also the pending payments affects when the 
And this is also the, the rebuy. So there's a lot of reasons why uh, loan originators uh, are repurchasing the loan. So it's not that the loan originators are repurchasing uh, them just because uh, they want to repurchase. Actually, mo in most of the cases, it is because uh, they have amended the agreement or there's an extension of the agreement if they don't have extension feature. Or, the, of course, a lot of borrowers make early repayments as well. So there's a lot of things why they are uh, bought back earlier or basically investors get the money earlier right uh, and then it's uh, uh, then it's uh, go can go into pending payments and of course it will affect uh, if they can be uh, invested straight away but again pending payments is usually up to seven days on average we've seen like three to four days today when uh, we see it's average about six days to get them uh, but uh, uh, once it is settled, so investors can receive the money and they can uh, reinvest. So that is about uh, this question. What is keeping them from manipulating with spending payments by not paying settlement payments before the sign effectively decreasing the interest rate? Uh, well, first of all, it's actually the, the most simple answer is that uh, each loan originator uh, is uh, the, the key, what is uh, uh, motivating is, of course, that uh, all the investors see the pending payments. So uh, when we introduce pending payments, so all of the loans are looking after them. They, of course, understand that if they're going to be late with, uh, uh, with passing the money, which they have collected to, from borrowers passing to us, uh, to distribute to investors, then investors are not going to invest. So that is an inherent motivation for them and not to uh, take any advantage of uh, that. And then on, on top of... Uh, that is, of course, our uh, risk team and then and, and, uh, the same late payment fees, which are uh, additional motivation. So there's no really, uh, at least we don't see loan originators manipulating this uh, with spending payments. Sure, they are managing their cash flow and if uh, it takes time for them to get the cash from the same branches or uh, it takes time for them to uh, transfer the money, so that's going to affect, but we definitely don't see them ma manipulating this. And if we would see, then we would take uh, measures straight away. Secondary market is not liquid. Uh, should be worried about the crisis affecting. So, yes, well, of course, the uh, COVID 19 is affecting also the investor interest. So, uh, secondary market is. Uh, there are buyers and sellers so today there might uh, be more seller than the buyer so there's uh, liquidity uh, that's how the liquidity is built and we see that uh, uh, those investors who want to uh, want to get liquidate their positions they uh, still liquidate it of course depends on the price so for every asset they're always going to be uh, 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 price and then uh, so for some investors if they believe that it is best to liquidate and they put a very uh, big discount they are obviously going to liquidate because there's be somebody who believes that uh, the price is uh, is very good and they are ready to invest so in general secondary market we see uh, from technical perspective of course uh, when we build the secondary market so uh, there was a spike uh, in in the in the yeah, investors trying to put the loans on the uh, on secondary market uh, over the last few weeks, but we our scaling team worked on that, so now it should be be fine. And this uh, spike was, of course, that the more investors put, so uh, there was a load on the system, so it took time to to, to load it. But now it sh should be fine, and all the loans which uh, can be listed should be listed. But of course, secondary market is just a function of supply and demand. If there's no investors who are interested to buy the specific price or specific discount they, they're not going to buy so then people not going to be able to liquidate their position if they want to liquidate so. so what are the new products launch we can expect uh, so the new products so we launched the mobile app so we're gonna we are working on that we actually updated i guess uh, last week and then uh, uh what is also uh, uh, in our pipeline is the same electronic money institution and IBAN account. So those going to come and hopefully we're also going to launch Mintos card. Uh, we are also working on, uh, on, uh, on, on, uh, uh, invest and access and to make it, uh, also taking into account feedback from investors to, to, to provide different strategies, which they can invest, uh, uh, through. And that's also something which we see we're going to launch in, in the next few months, which will, uh, then, uh, in our opinion, address this feedback, both from those who want to use, uh, invest in access type of uh, tool to 
to invest only in a, a higher yielding loans, uh, but then there are people who want to use investment access type of tool to invest diversified across all the loans. And then there are who are saying that uh, in this investment access, I just want to invest in very uh, A and B rated or higher rated loan originators and, and with a specific loan, loan quality as well. So basically we are working on that. So that's also something we should, uh, we should uh, come come uh, in the in the next few months but of course like in the last few weeks uh, all the effort has been to readjust our course and uh, and put us on a good path and going forward oh, why it takes so long to place on secondary market yes yeah, so that's basically there were a lot of investors at the same time uh, placing a lot of loans on the secondary market uh and then that increased the load on the on the secondary market uh, our scaling team i think they should have already uh, uh solved that and that should be you know should not be a problem to place it on the secondary market so the next question is uh this might be make or break for the lending uh as a or loans as an emerging asset class in the future do i agree for sure I definitely see, and that's I think what also I was trying to share that lending as itself is not the first downturn. So there's always been lending, alternative lending, also a lot of it was also b before the downturns. But this is the first time, perhaps, when individual investors are participating in the lending. But all of the uh, lending companies, I have people who who have worked in uh, already in finance, and they, uh, many of them, the companies themselves, have been through that. So. Uh, uh, obviously, there's going to be effects so for sure. So they're going to be affected. No questions asked about that. Uh, but I think this is a good uh, opportunity for for the alternative lending companies and for the loans as an asset class to show that it is a viable asset class and that it actually can perform very well also throughout the crisis. And uh, what is different, of course, from other asset classes that uh, uh, loans and the consumer credit and also small business credit is in many cases not very um, correlated with other, other asset classes. And uh, uh, that's also what can make them a very good investment in the, in the crisis or during the downturn. There are quite many loans that uh, finish prematurely. Uh, so the reason, as I said, so why there's many reasons why uh, loans can end uh, before the term. Uh, so a lot of loans are uh, repaid uh, uh, before the term, which is usual. So uh, many of the loans are small ticket loans. Some of them are higher interest loans. So people I want to get, get uh, uh, them only for a short period of time. So they try to uh, pay them back. So the same if you, uh, and the effective duration in general is much lower than, not much lower, but lower than the the, the contractual duration of the loan. So in general, uh, they're going to be uh, ending before the term on average. And then there are reasons which were built in, in the system. For instance, uh, we, uh, we didn't allow uh, if there were not extension feature for loan originators if the because the borrower comes to them uh, they say I want to extend uh, the loan the loan originators say yes it's a reasonable extension they extend and if they didn't have extension features so, uh, we required the loan originator to buy back the loan and then if they extended the new one to place it as a new loan on the marketplace so that's also what drives it also when the uh, borrowers come and there are uh, uh, changes in the agreement so there were instance points uh, i don't know the loan was uh, uh, had to be uh, paid on every uh, uh, every month on the tenth but the borrower comes and say hey i want to actually for me much better to pay so the uh, loan generator makes a change in the borrower agreement but this loan already is placed on Minter, so there's already payment schedule which says that the uh, borrower is going to pay on tens. So uh, in that case as well, we require the loan to buy back the loan and place it on Minter as a new loan because there's a change in the uh, underlying uh, asset which uh, investor has invested. A lot of different reasons why they can uh, end uh, before the term. Also, yes, uh, some of the loan investors will buy back the loans. Uh, uh, themselves, if they see that they have additional funding sources available and so forth, but uh, we don't allow to put uh, the same loans at a, a lower interest rate. So what the loan originators can do, yes, they can buy back the loans uh, 
from the marketplace so they have this uh, uh, call option uh, in the agreement so they can buy them back at any time and uh, uh, but they are not allowed to place the same loans on the marketplace uh, at a lower rate what they can do though of course is they they have an existing portfolio they buy back the loans from Mintos but then the same day maybe they originated you know like 100 other loans or 500 other loans of course they can put those new loans at whatever rate they seem fit for the given circumstances so that's also is something uh, to take into account okay so uh, why did we introduce pending payments uh, there's the uh, same purpose uh, grace period it's not so they are very different tools uh, grace period is a loan originator giving a grace period to the final borrower uh, so basically the end borrower uh, have a grace period in which they can make the payment and then pending payment is uh, what we give to the loan originator and then also loan that gives to us to make a settlement between uh, us and the loan originator so and uh, that's a, two different uh, things uh, without the pending payments, it's uh, uh, rather difficult uh, to operate because there's a lot of uh, cash moving back and forth, and uh, we have to have the cash in the account when we uh, put uh, uh, put it on the investor account. Uh, can we expect the pending payment period free from penalties to be reduced to two or three days in the future? I think we can. Uh, uh, I think uh, two, three days is perhaps uh, a bit uh, uh, unrealistic, but three or four or maybe five days uh, is something uh, something possible. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, well, as I explained, uh, I guess, already a few times, so uh, there's always going to be pending payments. It takes time to get the money from, I know, from indonesia to get the money to our accounts in europe and then distribute among investors it takes time so it's always going to be some kind of payments sir uh, just because of this technical uh technical kind of delays and also for us to make the settlement as well so we have to settle with the loan center for them they have to actually when they collect the payment yes api is super easy they collect the payment in whatever fashion they do uh, they collect the straight away in the system the loan shows it is uh, received the payment that api request and sends uh, information to us and then investors see yes the loan has been collected and the repayment has been collected uh, but it takes time uh, to actually uh, uh to actually uh transfer the money so that's of course is and uh, it takes a longer time and that's unfortunately is not as easy as uh, just the api request which is that the law has been uh repaid uh, why there are finco unauthorized investments how is this possible so um, basically uh finco uh, i think i already explained a few times uh they had the uh, technical uh issue with their api and that's why basically some of the loans went into the pending payments and then uh, they uh, uh, we relocated them reallocated to the still existing loans which uh, were available but they had to be extensions so that's what happened with those uh finko pending payments mobile app is great do we know when possible to invest from the mobile application so yes yeah, so we are working on that initially it's going to be all automated uh, well uh, is going to be invested in access and then uh, we're gonna uh, work uh, forward with that of course uh, given the the screen size uh, it's it's rather challenging to put all the manual and auto invest auto invest stuff so we we are uh, looking how we can bring that to the uh, to, to the mobile app but uh, for a very hardcore users who want to uh, adjust each and every parameter so most likely the desktop going to be their primary uh, choice when it comes to setting up those tools but when it comes to more automated yes that's going to also come on the on the mintos uh, mobile app uh, five things which we feel optimistic about in the current economic situation uh, uh, it, it is challenge times uh, what i think what uh, what makes me optimistic is uh, that there haven't hasn't been ever a time 
in the so while things are not great uh, the world is actually the best suited to deal with those things it's amazing to see how fast the science has uh, scientists have moved with all the uh, genome kind of sequencing with thinking about vaccines with uh, thinking about the medication to use how actually people can mobilize and so forth so if anything the world is in the best shape uh, possible to deal with these things and they're going to happen so the pandemics is not something new pandemics have uh, always uh, caused some uh, shakeups but uh, in our history we've seen as a society that we can manage the pandemics and many of them actually then end up with uh, uh with with uh, uh uh with a positive effect on on the econ economy in the, in the longer term some of them don't but uh some of them do so and uh, we have had uh, much larger of course pandemics and nobody of course well, uh, who could but uh all the black death in like 14th century or like spanish influence in 1920 so they were a huge pandemics and much we were much much uh, worse position to deal with them than we are today so when it comes to uh, uh economic situation so what what i'm optimistic about is that this is a different uh, different crisis uh and let's see how it goes out but uh, it could be the case that it uh, uh the rebounds is uh, faster but uh, i think now when the people realize that it's going to might, might take longer with all the lockdowns and everything so maybe it's not going to be as fast but at least it is different prices than it was in 2008 2009 and in general there's no problem with liquidity in the banks and, uh, and so forth so uh, there are also positive things to take in take a look at uh, from this situation so we covered about the mobile app Mogo Micro and Mogo has B rating by Fitch. Uh, we'll go on default, share how you made ratings and change. So we made ratings. Uh, our ratings is not comparable to Fitch for sure. Our ratings is uh, relative to the lending companies which we have on Mintos. So uh, some of them, uh, for uh, it's not, you can't compare what we have the rating and and uh, letters to those which are by Fitch and, uh, and S&P or what not, so other rating agencies. So our rating is based on uh, many different things. Uh, I think the best is just to go on the website and take a look there, but on a very uh, general terms, it's gonna be about the loan performance, it's gonna be about the management, it's gonna be about financial performance of sure, uh, the environment of the, uh, the companies and so forth. So there goes a lot of details into, into the, um, into the rating and while we are cognizant that not all uh, investors are gonna uh, uh, can agree with all our ratings so all our ratings are based on data and if anything uh, I would uh, uh, say that we have the most data available so we can talk with all the management teams we see all the management reports we talk with uh, the reference checks we do the market uh, overview we understand the product we see all the cohorts all the performance and so forth and all of it is translated to the rating yes yeah, the easy way might be just to go and look at a very high level annual report but the annual report shows up just only one aspect of the company which is financial performance and maybe some other things as well but in general what we pay much more attention is the same loan performance who is running the company what the product what are the cohorts how they are performing and many other things which are not uh, available for uh for investors or for for other people who want to do their dating so and uh, there's also all, always going to be differences in assessment and our assessment is uh, very well detailed with a, a clear uh uh kind of uh, as much as possible objective reasons so there's a very little su subjectivity there uh, okay so what is the status of mogo loan loan financial statements will be published uh, mogo actually published financial statements on the end of february i think on 24th of february so investors can go in uh, on the mintos uh, website and see their financial statements so uh was a strong uh, strong year last year for uh, mogo and mogo is uh, they have a publicly listed bond so all the financial statements they uh, update uh and they actually put them the same on the on the stock exchange as they do uh, with us so we covered about micro why the 
allow the repeatedly manipulate repurchase by issuing file loans, but then refunding the loans so with no fines. We do not. So it's uh, first of all, there's no manipulation. They cannot ma manipulate what they can do. Uh, there's a lot of loans which are uh, repaid earlier. There's termination of agreements, and especially for Mogo, changing the uh, changing the date because uh, they have a lot of. Uh, uh, longer lo longer term loan, so uh, uh, borrowers during the uh, uh, loan term can come and say that they want to change this or that uh, point in the agreement, and then once this is changed, they won't, uh, Mogo have to buy back the loan and uh, pl place again, uh, and then they kind of just, uh, uh, so we are monitoring them, they just don't come and just uh, rebuy the loans and then place them at the lower interest rate. What they can do, they can come, rebuy the loans and then place a new loan so with a lower interest rate, which is perfectly fine given the circumstances. What's happening with ID Finance Spain? I'm paying because of the lockdown in Spain. Uh, not really, so because uh, there's a lot, uh, most of the actually, and I don't know by heart about I define in Spain, but as a general note is that uh, uh, a lot of the lenders are online lenders, and that means that the repayments are online. So there's no effect uh, from the lockdowns on their collections. How likely is that the staff will be let go? Well, unfortunately, this was a tough day when uh, we had to lay off some people. So, um, but we did our um, uh, we did all, all what we could to uh, let it not happen. We cut all the costs. We uh, we take we took a deferred uh, salaries. Uh, we we did uh, uh, everything we could, but still, and that was not enough to put on a good pass. But we did all possible so that this would be the the uh, last uh, round of layoffs in the in the near future. And so yeah, now we feel uh, very confident with what we the plan we have put in place. Uh, what measures are being taken to have timely period financial? Some reports are from long time ago. We acknowledge that, and there we are. Uh, 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 there we are, uh, uh, to some extent, at the mercy of the loan originators. So the loan originators, uh, there's many different loan originators from many different countries. All of them are, uh, most of them are private companies. Uh, so uh, not all of them have the, that uh, quality, high quality of the uh, reporting. Uh, it's in different languages. Some of them are... Uh, more afraid of putting out uh, too much information because of the competitive environment and there's a myriad of factors which are affecting so yes an easy uh, uh easy way uh what, what some investors say well why why you did, just don't say that you uh, don't want to uh introduce that they, they have to have a reporting standards while it is easy to it's easier said than done because we still uh, also have to balance the uh, the interest of investors and interest of the loan originator. So we have we are two sides of the marketplace. So we cannot just come and say, hey, these are the rules. So basically, what we have uh, made the approach is that uh, we encourage, we require information, but then that's uh, then the the loan originators. Uh, there's minimum what they have to place, but uh, it's going to differ from loan originator to loan originator how much they place. And financial statements is just a one one uh, one thing. What uh, what we see. Uh, we we much more pay attention to the uh, to the own performance, which is uh, uh, because financial performance, financial reports are very backward looking statements, whereas uh, loan performance is very real time. So we we receive all the API requests and all the information about the loan performance, and the same investors can see on statistics page on a real time basis. So we pay much more attention there. We see how those are uh, performing and if they are not. Uh, problems with that. So, and then we also do, of course, have the management reports, which are uh, for the <clears throat> for our use, and we use those. So, in general, financial reports is just like one part. But you know, of course, we understand, and in, in ideal world, we would want to see them all loan originators to to have quarterly uh, reports, uh, all in English, all in one one format like perfect reports but uh well i don't see it uh, happening when we have 64 different uh, loan originators from uh, 33 different countries so there's a lot of different uh, uh reporting standards uh, situations competitive environments and so forth uh, so uh, that's uh, the reality of the situation 
Uh, what are our plans to navigate the upcoming uh, crisis closely? So this is what I covered in the in the intro. So basically adjusting to the situation, working more closely with the loan originators, and then following what what measures the loan originators are taking. Uh, do we realize the responsibility we have? If only one screw up, will be vanish. Uh, uh, so we do our best to to, to uh, uh, avoid those situations, uh, uh, but obviously we are also realistic. So uh, it's all, all the lending companies so gonna be affected, and so some of them might be affected to the point that uh, the borrowers are not repaying. There's problems with collections, and then uh, the loan uh, lending companies, the loan that have problems with adhering to the buyback guarantees and they might go out of business and that's part of of the risk we, we have to take as a as a, as a marketplace but also which investors uh, have to uh, keep in mind so uh, for all the uh, there's the, the uh, basically uh, always risk has to be taken or interest that has to be taken uh, hand in hand with the risk so of course there is a risk and it's not risk free investment and there might be problems with collecting the payments and uh, most likely there will be some problems um but we are in the position to to do our best to, to limit those uh, problems which starts if anything first and foremost with uh, uh this initial due diligence of which loan generators which allow we allow to um, join the marketplace so uh, if anything on uh, the loan centers which we see on the marketplace are the uh, among the top uh, players in the respective countries uh, many of them are international businesses with like thousands of employees and large large companies so uh, obviously there are also smaller players uh, but in general the uh, they are top players and uh, all of them have went through uh, uh, our due diligence, which uh, these days is, is uh, very stringent, what we have in this. Um, and then, so even big banks go out of, out of business, and, uh, and that's uh, nobody's um, is, is, uh, safe from that. Then, uh, what is next? Uh, in the direct investment structures, uh, which are the most secure. So indirect is uh, direct is when the uh, investor is uh, buying the underlying claim against the final borrower and borrower, and uh, indirect is when they are buying a, a claim towards the loan originator, where the claim is then uh, uh, has a pledge towards uh, underlying loans as a as a pledge. So those are two different ways how to get the exposure. So we. Uh, First and foremost, we always prefer the direct, but in some countries for legal reasons and for legal constructions, that's not possible. So that's when we go with indirect. And when the uh, if something happens with, uh, uh, with a bar of repayments or loan originators, so uh, it's again, how secure it depends uh, on the country by country. So in some countries, direct might be better in some indirect, and also depends on the specific contractual agreements and so forth. Uh, do we consider improving mean interest rating system? Yes, uh, I covered that, so we're definitely going to work on that. We're also going to review our recent update, and then we're also going to work on uh, updating it, uh, it even more. Uh, do you have emergency plan in case a whole platform is at risk? If yes, what are the key components of this plan? So, sure, we have the plans, what happens in, say, like the same now, like working out of office is actually not a problem for us when it comes to more kind of uh, from financial perspective. So we are all the time, time very closely following our projected revenue cost base and so forth. So in general, I would say that is uh, 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 all the time what we do uh, is uh, uh, so not all the but we, we follow this all the time. So this is uh, uh, just part of our responsible uh, business operations. How does Mintos Verify only extends a loan and the underlying consumer has truly really been extended? So for that, uh, first of all, there are uh, uh, in our cooperation agreements are very stringent uh, points on that, that the loan originators provide uh, correct information. Uh, and of course, we cannot go in and uh, check each and every 
extended the loan, but what we do, we have uh, a lot of triangulation which we can use. So this is like management reports, which this is the same financial report. This is what we see in the system. And if there are inconsistencies, we will be uh, able to see them uh, straight away. Uh, and then it's a uh, uh then it's also what we do is uh we do a random checks so we take a loan randomly and just check that uh from the issuance to actually repayment that everything was done according to the schedule uh, so we, we have uh already hour and a half uh, spent on this uh i'm uh, happy to to take uh say Ten more questions, and then uh, then then let's uh, let's wrap it up because I see that there is 151 questions. So uh, as much as I would like to answer all of them, uh, it's uh, obviously would take a lot of time. And uh, you're always uh, welcome to reach out to our uh, customer investor service team. We do our best to uh, to respond in a timely manner. Of course, now with all the uncertainty, there's also increased load in the questions we get, um, but uh, uh, rest assured that we will try our best to come in, in, a, in the shortest uh, possible uh, period of time. So uh, I would, if you if you want specific questions uh, answered, just try to go on Slido and upload them. So I'm gonna now pick the uh, top 10 questions and uh, uh, then wrap it up. So when the credits will be paid back for the moment, the star system stopped completely. So uh, credits are paid back all the time. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, the thing is why it might feel that they're stopped is because of the pending payments. So previously how, how it happened, so there were investments in loans, there were borrower repayments, and then uh, if they matched, so we could release the money straight away to, to investors because uh, there's no, we don't, uh, exp we don't, uh, wait for the money from loan originators because we can net exactly what we did uh what we had to send to the loan originator with what they had to send to us and so we can release so that happened uh previously now it's uh it takes a bit more time but uh, that doesn't mean that the uh, it stopped it's basically investors have to wait for those few years and of course given those uncertainty and everything was happening we understand the um the uh kind of anxiety to some extent and frustration that the money is not straight away in, in, in my account but while well, the pending payments uh, uh, usually are uh, settled once a week and uh, all uncertainty started last week so we are with the lending companies they are making the transfers uh, some of them uh, large transfers to, to clear the pending payments the same thing called last week they transferred more than seven mil million in the uh, to clear the pending payment. So that's ongoing process. So nothing is stopping. So the lender, loan originators are continuing to, to, to uh, service the loans uh, receiving the borrower repayments and so forth. What is the situation of fun, Sun Finance? So Sun Finance is, uh, uh, is another lo rather large loan originator of the marketplace. They had a strong situation, a strong last year as well uh so and now they as well adjusted to the current situation they tightened their credit scoring and the rich profiles cut the, cut the costs where possible and they are putting themselves on the on this uh, on the path so that they can survive the uh, the upcoming downturn but uh, as for many so also they see actually this uh, as a good opportunity to take larger uh market share and to cater to the uh, uh higher credit worthiness uh, customers. And that's also what's happening. Uh, what are the owners behind Mintos? How many and where are they located? So Mintos, so uh, we are, uh, as a startup, so uh, we started, it was me, uh, and then the other Martin joined as a co-founder. So we own part of the Mintos, and we raised the capital from equity investors. So equity investors we raised from what you could call angel investors or like private individuals. So uh, those are the guys who who uh, uh, built for finance one of the uh, uh, leading uh, uh, alternative lending companies in, in Europe and in other countries so they had the size of operations they, they sold that and then afterwards they started to invest in different companies so uh, they are our equity investors and we are very happy to have them and then we do 
uh, give stock options to all the employees. So all the employees also have stock options in the company. So they also are uh, <clears throat> owners of, of Mintos. So uh, that's uh, ownership of Mintos. Uh, how many? Well, we have uh, well, it's uh, many owners because of all the uh, employees. So it's, uh, a lot of them, but if uh, I guess the question is more about uh, private investors, equity investors. So it's four guys, and they are located here in uh, uh, in real Latvia. Will you carry additional due diligence to loan investors in regard to economic difficulties? We covered that. So yes, we are now doing daily monitoring and uh, working on uh, on, on communication with loan originators. How we will ensure that pay fixed costs, the German loan will drop as long as they that you pay. Yeah, so uh, our fixed costs are actually rather low. So uh, our cost base is, um, is of course, salaries. It's uh, commissions which we pay to the banks. It is uh, our office, of course. It's uh, uh, some marketing spend on the on referred friends and affiliates, uh, uh, legal as well. Some so basically, uh, it's. Uh, uh, it's rather it's, we, we can adjust the, the, the cost base. So today we uh, well, over the last week has been uh, very long days and nights. So we got uh, most of the costs to zero. So we introduced zero based budgeting and start from zero. And uh, now we just have the the key essential costs and well and one more is of course as the technology companies you have to pay for the servers and uh, Amazon AWS. But in general we don't have much fixed costs. So. We have, well, we have a reasonable uh, cash available in the bank account, 3.6 million euros, and we believe that should be, even with rather pessimistic uh, revenue, uh, it should be enough to weather this through for the next like 15, 19 months. Um, but, but of course, we have to take into account that there is uh, uncertainty. Uh, I appreciate uh, taking my time. Uh, I appreciate the, the, the uh, you saying thanks for doing this webinar. So uh, this is a, a pleasure to, to spend time and answer so many questions. I wish I would could answer all of them, but obviously it's just popping. Like I, I close one and like five appear, so it's a uh, it's a lot of them. Do you plan to charge a secondary market? No. So secondary market is for liquidity. Uh, we believe liquidity is part of uh, investors willing to invest and so that they can liquidate the uh, subject to that they are uh, there is a demand for the loans but we're not going to charge for a secondary market at least we don't have such plans in the near future do you think that the uh, providers in russia who borrowed euro will be able to have such big depreciation rubble uh yes so uh, uh we we see some of them are using the hedging uh, for some, it could be um, more challenging, but then they are part of bigger organizations. Uh, so far, we have not seen, but uh, obviously those uh, those those um, uh, currency fluctuations affect the, the business as well. It's good that the the loan terms are usually uh, not like multi year loan, so the the exposure is is, is less on currency. And also, we are uh, working with. Uh, uh, with one of the service providers to uh, offer hedging uh, solutions to the loan originator. So we had a good progress, but of course, with all the turmoil in the market. So uh, there was some uh, uh, other stuff to take care of uh, for us and lending companies. But in general, we are working to provide uh, uh, hedging uh, solutions to the one from, uh, so from the service provider which we work with. So sudden increase in pending payments from loans to Mintos take much longer to get the money transferred. So yes, this is uh, because borrower repayments are more than uh, investments. So basically that means that we have to wait for the money from loan originators. Pre uh, previously it was that the loan originators were waiting money from us to them. So now we have to wait for them. So that, that's why always pending payments will increase when there's more borrower repayments than than, than uh, investments in loans. So we have to wait for this money to owners that is transferred to us. Uh, how we keep up the spirits, work from home is key situation. It is, um, uh, well, we are used to remote work. It has been, uh, been uh, part of 
uh, our culture uh, from very early days. Uh, so I think the spirits are, are fine there, but of course, with all the kind of tough decisions which we have make, uh, we have to make it. Uh, it's never easy. So, uh, so we try to do our best to help all the people which uh, which we had to uh, lay off. But of course, uh, it is. <clears throat> emotional day to day for many of us. What is pending payments really? That's, I guess, we already uh, discovered. And uh, what is ex update on Peach? Even can we expect so on Peach as well? So uh, we have to work with administrator. So the Peach, the, the borrowers have, uh, the administrator ha continues collecting the payment. So for every payment, we then have to uh, agree with the administrator. So we have involved legal uh, counsels and le or law firms uh, from the UK and uh, working with them. And uh, I, I don't know by heart when we can expect the payments, but I know that uh, I think the last what I heard is that they already had uh, uh, collected around like 700,000 uh, pounds or euros uh, in, in payments. Uh, with that, uh, I will uh, thank you everybody who joined. Uh, it was a pleasure and thanks for all the questions. It's never ending. Definitely would want to answer all of them. Uh, hopefully you got through. Uh, you got some valuable information. Uh, as always, while it is challenging these days, but I'll, if you ever are in Riga or in Berlin or, or Vilnius or Warsaw, uh, definitely stop by at our offices. So we're happy to Welcome you guys, do ask questions on our support. So uh, we will do our best to communicate, be transparent and tell, uh, answer all the questions you have. Other than that, uh, I guess I'm gonna finish here today. Stay healthy, stay, uh, stay, stay uh, positive. And uh, uh, that's perhaps uh, uh, the end of, uh, of the, webinar today. Thanks a lot and uh, see you around. Cheers. Bye-bye.